I love gardening. I love watching things grow. Um, I love to, to go to botanical gardens. When Dana Wetzel needs to unwind, she comes here to the Selby Botanical Garden in Sarasota, Florida. Oh, these are some of my favorites right here. It's a place for her to relax, to clear her mind. And it's also a place, she says, reminds her of the complex chemistry churning and bubbling inside all living things. I do think about the geeky part of gardening, you know, the, the biochemistry part of it, the chemical signals. When you're a science geek, you start thinking all these crazy things. <laughs> Wetzel is actually a professional science geek. She's a biochemist at the Moat Marine Laboratory just down the street from here in Sarasota. She uses chemistry as a window into understanding the natural world and as a tool for measuring the impact of oil drilling and production, not on plants, but on marine animals like dolphins, whales, and fish. Her job's taken her around the world, from the canals of Venice, where she studied how oil limits the growth of shellfish, to the icy tundra of the Arctic, where she examined the impacts of oil drilling on beluga and bowhead whales. But her first experience in the field was much closer to home. In the early 1990s, Wetzel was a graduate student at the University of South Florida when disaster struck in her own backyard. Two oil barges collided in Tampa Bay, spewing thousands of gallons of crude into the water. I was thinking, oh my God, I can't believe what a mess this oil is. And then my science part kicked in and the questions just started coming in my head of, wow, I wonder what it's doing, I wonder what chemically it's doing, I wonder how to increase the rate of degradation. Anybody who loves science always asks why and how come and what if. So all those things were going through my head. So she jumped into a tiny inflatable boat and headed out to study the oil as it washed through the bay's thick mangroves. That experience grew into a master's thesis and influenced her doctoral work a few years later. From that point on, I was kind of keen on the topic of petroleum, and I wanted to do more of it. Today, a second environmental disaster is giving Wetzel an eerie reminder of those early days in the field. In April 2011, the Deepwater Horizon spill dumped nearly 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf, about 40 miles off the coast of Louisiana. It fouled marshes and wetlands and killed countless fish and marine mammals. Wetzel says the big question that remains isn't about the spill's immediate impact. It's about what happens to the environment long afterwards when that sticky, oily mess settles onto the ocean floor. We're wondering if this continued presence of oil, which there is still oil out there in the sediments, is it going to have a long-term effect on a fish's immune system and ability to reproduce and perhaps some DNA damage effects? And it, is that short-term, is it long-term, or is there going to be no impact at all? Back here in her lab, Wetzel is starting to chip away at those questions. With the help of researchers from Moat and the University of South Florida, she's gathering samples of blood, tissue, and bile from fish in the Gulf, and she's testing them for harmful chemicals. But the Gulf of Mexico is a big place, and even three years after the spill, Wetzel says it's too early to tell exactly what the long-term impact of the oil might be. Over the next few years, she's hoping that she and her team will have a clearer sense of what a big spill like this does to marine life, and by extension, to humans. We can't separate ourselves from what goes on in the ocean. If the health of the oceans decline, you know, that's going to significantly impact humans. And so we want to protect everything that we can. I guess it's all part and parcel of, of thinking about being a keeper of the environment.